Hey and welcome to another tutorial. Today I will show you how to create this Discord logo inside Microsoft PowerPoint. So the left one is an image, the right one is the creation done in Microsoft PowerPoint. So let's get started. I will start in the blank presentation where I already have this logo pasted in and I will select format, colors and I will select this gray preset just so it's a little bit faded so we can clearly see what we are drawing. I will zoom in but not that much and I will probably start with this outer shell shape. Now you can see it's a little bit of rounded so I will probably use the oval so insert shapes oval but I will draw it in a fairly large size maybe like this. Then I will open, will open the fill properties and in the more fill colors I will raise the transparency all the way up to maybe like I don't know 80% or so. Now you may be wondering why I'm not using your no fill at all. If I select no fill it will be very hard for me to select the shape because I would have to click on the outline. So even if I don't want to see the fill, but I want to work with the shape, it's usually a good idea to set the transparency. You know, even if it's set to 100%, it's not visible, but you can still select the shape. Anyway, in this case, I believe that I will set the transparency to maybe like 80%. That seems about right. And I will try to match the left part of the shape. And you can see it's not that much of it actually. So it's just around like this. If I zoom in, as much as I can over the left side of the shape. I can use my arrow keys to move the shape around and make sure that it's somehow similar in shape. So this seems about right. So I will just position it right now, right here. And I will duplicate the shape by dragging the shape with the control and shift key being pressed and move it to the left side. So I will match the right side up on the right. Okay, I believe that uh, what I can do is I can merge those shapes together right now. So I can select both shapes and select format merge shapes and I will select intersect which will give me this left and right uh, side of the of the main shape and I believe that's uh, all for the outer shape so I can probably show the selection pane and just hide it for now so it's not getting in our way and I can focus on the bottom part and then on the top part so for the bar part there are also some rounded parts so I will also select insert shapes oval I'll draw it like this and you can see that it's still opaque. So if I select shape fill, more fill colors, if I raise the transparency to 80%, what I can do now is I can right click and select set as default shape, which will cause that all the newly drawn shapes will have this fill and outline property. So once I draw another shape, it will also be semi-transparent. I will resize the shape and try to match the bottom part of the shape, maybe like this. And again, I will drag it with the control and shift key being pressed and move it on the right side and position it properly using my arrow keys. Then I will duplicate it one more time, move it like this, duplicate it to the right side. And you can see it's getting pretty crowded, but we'll get rid of those shapes when we start merging them together. So maybe uh, before I do that, I will just hide those and draw this curve. So this like top part of the mount. So I'll insert a new shape being the oval and immediately you can see that's already semi-transparent. And I can try to resize it from both sides if I drag this handle with my control key pressed on my keyboard. And that seems about right. Okay, so I will select uh, this shape and this shape and I will just simply subtract it. So select merge shapes, subtract. And I will do the same for those two shapes. So first this one and second this one. And the order in which we select those shapes is kind of important because if I would do it in the other way, if I just select this one first, and that one as the second shape, then it will be of course the other way around. I will be subtracting the other shape from the first one. So the Z order or the order in which the shapes are being drawn is not important. It's more important in, in the or the order in which you select those shapes. Okay, so merge shapes subtract. And we want to also subtract this straight line. So for this one, I'll most likely add a new rectangle, which I will rotate to match the angle like this, like so. Position it properly, duplicate it, select rotate, flip horizontal and move it over the right shape like this. Then I will separate those two shapes and also those two shapes. And while I am at it, I can also select all those three shapes and just union those together. So merge them together. OK, you can see that the top part is not quite matching. So we will most likely draw different shapes for the top part. So I will zoom in to the top part like this and again insert a new shape being the circle or the oval. It's kind of hard to guess the right angle. Maybe like this. Duplicate for the right side. And new ovals for the inner inner parts. Now 
maybe I can even ro try to rotate these shapes a, li a little bit. Okay, that seems better. So I will duplicate it and flip it horizontally and use it for the right gap like this. Then again, I will select this shape and that shape and just subtract those. So select format, merge shape, subtract. And I will do the same for those two. So I will subtract those shapes. I will subtract this straight line. So again, I will draw a new rectangle, which I have to rotate to match the angle. Like this. Duplicate it, flip it vertically. Actually, it was horizontally. I want to flip it horizontally. No, vertically. Okay. Hmm. Horizontally. Okay, it is. I've accidentally hit on the selection pane, but I will select the left shape and the rectangle and subtract those, and I will do the same with the right shape and the rectangle. So, the only missing part is this top uh, edge of the head. So, I'll insert a new oval. I will try to match the curvature like this, like so. Okay, that seems about right. So I'll merge all those three shapes together. So select a merge shapes union. And I will show the previous shape, which is kind of overlapping the first one. So I will most likely just uh, subtract part of the shape, maybe using the rectangle. So select merge shape, subtract. Then I will merge those two shapes together. So like merge shapes union. And I will create a new intersection between the old shape and the new shape. So the, like the side shapes and the top and bottom shape. But you can see probably there is a little bit of gap between the old shape and the new shape just around here. Just that, just, so just to make sure that we will get the right shape, I will actually add something. You know, it could be anything to this shape. So I'll most likely just add the rectangle in here. So I'll draw a rectangle like this which I will add to the shape, just to make sure that the intersection is over the entire shape. Then I will select those two shapes and select Merge Shapes, Intersect, and I do have the main head shape, which is great. So the only missing part are the eyes and this bubble, the speech bubble. So for the eyes, it's easy as it could be, because we can just insert two ovals, just to make sure that they are in the right size. I will duplicate with my Ctrl and Shift key being pressed, and position it properly using my arrow keys. For the bubble part, I can insert a new rounded rectangle, so insert shapes around the rectangle, and I will try to draw it in the same size, but obviously I have to change the roundness of the corners, so I have to change the roundness to be a little bit smaller. And I will try to make the same size like this. Now for the bottom part, for the actual arrow, I will draw a new, uh, new triangle, insert shapes and I will use this uh, right angle triangle. I'll draw it with my shift key being pressed and I will select rotate flip vertically and horizontally. I will align it with the right side of the shape if I can like this and of course resize it to kind of match the angle. Now before I edit this I have to subtract this line this part also this corner as well. So what I will do is I will insert probably a new shape being this uh, trapezoid, which I will draw like this, but I will flip it vertically and just try to match the angle using this yellow handle like this. So first I will subtract the trapezoid from the rounded rectangle, then I will add back the triangle, so merge shapes union. And now we should have the very same looking shape. So I will hide the picture, move everything to the right side, show the picture, move the picture on the left side, select format, reset the picture colors, then I will select the background, which should be of course below all the other shapes and the eyes, and I will set the outline to be no outline, and I will sample the color, the fill color using the eyedropper tool, and I will sample the wild color from the left logo. For the main head, it should be of course white, I can either just uh, set it to white and set the transparent to 0%, or I can simply use the eyedropper tool and sample the white color, which will also automatically set the transparency to be 0%. For the outline, it should be of course no outline as well. And that's it. That's how you create the Discord logo inside Microsoft PowerPoint. Thanks for watching.